Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Well, I've had Dynon Skyview HDX in my Mooney M20C Ranger, 1968 Mooney, and for about six months now. And so I've been getting a lot more emails and questions on how it's doing, uh, do I still like it, any flaws in the system, um, and how do I update and download charts, uh, whether it's IFR charts, VFR charts, and stuff of that nature, what program do I use, and also how to update the database for Dynon. So I'm going to go over that today. Uh, the weather is not so good for flying today, so this video is just going to be about the Dynon Skyview HDX, so stick around. Let's listen to the weather here. So I got, I finally remembered to do the, the, stand, the standby. The D10A that uh, and on offers as a backup. Got my speeds, my altimeter, altitude, all that stuff. Doing 126 over the ground. 151. That's how much of that cornering cross went. We're at 222. Two, two. Uh, 236 actually, and it's coming at a 263. So it's really. Seven, Rick Robbins, old 17,300 knots for left finger speed. Traffic pattern is 1200. Um, full screen that. This is a nice system, but Dian Skyview HDX, it gives you the right, you know, you can move this around how you wanted to do it, but it gives you every, all the information in your waypoints on the right hand side, ETAs, your location. It's nice, we're moving. Outside temperature, 28 degrees Fahrenheit. We have weather there. Let's see the weather. So nine minutes old, VFR, 10, uh, 10 miles visibility, overcast, 3,100. So we got to watch out for that. Okay, folks, I'm going to do as best as I can. So my thumb drives I use is, I don't know how the camera is going to really look into this, but um, is Kingston... And it's the uh, DT50, and it's 64 gigabytes. I found that this works really good with the Dynon Skyview. And all these, uh, this will actually hold all my charts in the system. And then once, I, and I have two, uh, two of them because I have two screens. Uh, the good thing about having two of these is that on my other screen, I can have VFR charts going and on my, my screen I can have uh, IFR charts going if I choose to so it's two separate things which is pretty good to have um, which is nice so that's what I use I have no problem with this so how do you um, update your charts so the program that Dynon Skyview uses along with Aspen and some other um, uh, companies out there it's uh, Seattle Avionics Okay, chart data manager. That's what that's what we're, what we're using today. And I'll just blow it up here if I can. No, I can't. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I have video editing in the background here, and I'm I'm actually downloading a video right now as you speak. Um, but it's very simple. So you take your thumb drive, okay, um, you put it in the computer, okay, and it's gonna come over here, and it's gonna say you have a couple things outdated. Okay, so all you do is you take your mouse and you hit update. Okay, and what that's going to do is that's going to update that thumb drive. And you have to do it with the other one as well. Um, and we'll do that next. Uh, but it'll probably take about 10 minutes or so to update. 
Um, and in this system here, uh, this company, in this system here, uh, it's $100 a year to subscribe to it, and you get all your charts. You get all your charts. So it's going to do your uh, your VFR charts. It's going to be your, your uh, IFR low, IFR high, um, and it tells you when they actually expire. And some do, some don't right now. And of course, the airport diagrams, it also update for you. And approach plates. So it has all this information in here, and that's going to download what it's doing right now. So it's copying, uh, verifying files to the USB drive, and it'll take probably about 10 minutes. And we're not going to sit here for 10 minutes. <laughs> so I'll come right back with you guys. Okay, once your update is complete, everything will be green. Okay, it means everything is done. So you have your... Uh, U.S. VFR IFR subscription expires, so if I expire 3-18-2021, United States, USB drive, uh, and we have device expires, 12-30, so all this stuff will expire again 12-30, so it's basically once a month. So your high, IFR high, low, VFR charts, and approach plates and, and airport diagrams, and just tells you your uh, airport diagrams up here as well, and then it all expires on the end of the year. So that's, what's today's date? Today is the uh, second, so it's going pretty quick. So basically when that's done, it's gonna say your update, I'm sorry if the GoPro is not um, zooming in and out for us here, I can't really know if it's blurry or not, but it'll say update process complete. So your update is complete, you basically pull out your drive and everything will go red again as it's going. And just edit, and just edit out and exit out of this stuff here. And then what we're gonna do now is we edit, exit out, okay, and then Oops, don't want to do that. So let's go back to Chrome. And we're going to go to, on the top here, we're going to go to Dynon. It's already in there, of course, saved. DynonAvionics.com. And then this screen comes up. So then you go to Certified, because my airplane is certified. So Dynon Certification. And you want to take another USB uh, thumb drive, Not obviously not the one you have all your charts on that's totally separate so if you have two screens you get two uh, why do you have two because you can have two different charts on either screen which is nice to have okay so that's separate so now I have a another USB 32 gig thumb drive okay works well so sand disk okay and then that goes back in to the slot okay that's gonna come up and here's Dynon certification screen what I should have did is I should have recorded the screen instead of using the GoPro, but it's fine. It wasn't working that right this morning. Uh, so you basically go over to support, okay? Hit over to support, and all these drop downs will come alive here. And then you're going to go all the way over to um, software update. So software update, and you're going to go to approve Skyview HDX software. You click on that. This is a certified plane. It's an STC approved plane. So we go down to the bottom and it's going to say download uh, updated version 11.5. It's a little outdated here. Uh, that's why on my video you, you saw previous to this one, it said database outdated. That's why. So um, Dian makes it very user friendly. It's simple. It's really nice, and so it's easy. So you go to download, and it's going to come up right here, okay, on the bottom. I would open up your file right here. I'm sorry. My dog is making a lot of noise here. Um, and then you go take that file. Actually, let's go like this. Sorry guys. There we go. All right. We're gonna take that downloaded file and then we're gonna basically drag it up here to the USB drive E right here. So you take it down here Drag it up to the USB drive E, drop it in, and it's going to download. And that's it. 
So, and then when we go to the airplane, that's the next step. We will do that. I'll show you how that's done on the screen itself. It's very easy. The other things they, the other thing they have is under the updates is your obstacles and database, uh, U.S. Aviation's obstacles and database um, updates as well. So, um, valid November 5th through December 2nd. So we're going to wait for that. And upcoming, oh, let's see, no, actually, let's download it. Okay, and I'm going to put it, let's open up, just open up again. And I'm going to put it in my, I'm going to drop it in. It's not going to work, but we'll drop it into the USB drive E. And that will save in there. Okay, so that's all in the USB thumb drive right now that I pulled out. And that's basically how you, how you would update your airplane using the website from Dynon. So it's, again, we'll blow it up now since it's saved. Go to home. Uh, here's a home page from Dynon Certified. Okay, you go over to the support. Okay, drop down boxes come to life here. You go all the way over. And here's your databases and charts updates and your software updates. And you download it onto a thumb drive. Pretty easy. Okay, so now we're going to do, go to the, we'll go to the bottom here. Um, next time I'll try to record the screen. Go here, we'll eject. Okay, very good. And pull the thumb drive out. So we have the thumb drive for the Dynon updates okay and then we have two thumb drives for um the charts and i'll show you how all this is going to go into the airplane how it's all going to work how we're going to download everything very easy so you basically if you have two screens you need two and, you, and if you have one screen one and of course you need one for the dynon i also have one for the ifd 540 as well from avidine so i have that as well uh we're not going to update that today uh but other than that it's pretty easy i'm gonna put the links um, below this this video on how to get these if you want them these work very well for me I know something some of the thumb drives don't work uh, with the charts dine on so um, These work for me, so I would use these I'm gonna put them down below this, of the video here and check them out You can go to Amazon and grab them. It's, it's not a big deal um, And then now we're gonna take a ride go to the airport go in the plane and show you how to actually update uh, this dine on Skyview HDX it's very easy to for the um, charts because all you do is you're plugging these into a USB port and that's all you're doing. And mine are hidden behind the panel so you don't see them. And they stay in there for the whole month. When a month is up and it's expired, you pull them out, you come home, you update them for about 15, 20 minutes and you're done. So stick around, let's go to the airport. Okay guys, so we're in the hangar, obviously. And we're going to, I'm gonna show you uh, how to update the Dynon Skyview HDX uh, through the setup process, and also uh, where to where I actually have the USB ports for the thumb drives for the maps. So let's go on the plane. I got some lights hooked up. That's a bright light. And I got one inside so I can get, get a, a better view. I'll uh, bring my phone or my flashlight, I should say, so we can, in case we have to uh, get a brighter underneath the dash. So let's hop on the airplane. I have a heater inside, which is nice. This keeps it from uh, opening up. So I'm gonna open up the door. Here's a little heater I have on very low. It is nice and warm in the airplane right now. All right, guys, we're in the plane. I'm gonna show you how to update the Dynan Skyview HDX uh, with the thumb drives. So what we're basically going to do is I have some lighting. Hopefully it's enough lighting in here. I got my phone down there with a, with a light underneath. So again, these are the thumb drives that I use. Okay, I will put the name of this in a link below. Okay, and I use 64 gigs. It's just a, it's just a, a perfect uh, amount of gigs you can use. And then I have the Another thumb drive for the Dynon Skyview HDX for the um, database.
So that let that come up. I'm sorry if it's a little dark in here. I'm trying with the lighting. It's terrible. So let that come up. It's going to blow it up here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put the thumb drive in. Now, on this particular thumb drive, just so you guys know, the Skyview HDX will not load. It will just say Skyview uh, on the screen. So some USB um, thumb drives don't work unless you plug it in after it loads. So that's why the charts, this company is what I found to be that works perfect. Okay, so again, I'm gonna put this on the bottom of the screen here. Uh, so let's put in the thumb drive into the USB port. Okay, so we're in. You see how it says no longer current? We're gonna fix that, okay? So we're gonna go accept that for now. Uh, I'm gonna hold the display and the caution buttons down together, okay? It's seven and eight. You hold them down together, it comes up. So here's your settings. Software, system update, so on and so forth. You can change your PDF setup if you like. You can make this the way you want it, the screen, okay? The display part of it. Map setup, you can change all kinds of things. Map, uh, screen layout differently. You can do all kinds of stuff in here. It's a lot of messing around. And one day I'll go over all that. Uh, let's go to system, system, uh, software, system software. So we'll click on that using the right button or the left button. We'll use the right one for now because I'm on the right seat here. And it's, we're gonna load file. And I have the update right here. I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to hit load. Okay. Are you sure? Yes, we do want to upload the sensor 68299. So we hit yes. And it did it pretty quick. So that was a fast update. We're done. And we'll go back to the other one. I have the FAA uh, charts in here. And then we'll click on that and we'll update that as well. So you gotta hit load. Okay, yes. Are you sure you wanna update it? Absolutely. And it'll do its, it'll do its thing. And of course you don't wanna power anything off. It's gonna tell you all that. It's gonna load everything up, clean everything up for the database. And that's basically it. So I was gonna say loads complete. It was successfully updated. You're gonna hit done and you're done. That is it. So it's pretty easy. And uh, again, I'll, one day I'll spend time on the whole system. Uh, I've learned it in and out pretty well now uh, on how to change things around. Basically, you could Okay, we did all that already. Let's go back. Let's, let's cancel. Excuse me. Cancel. So system setup. You can set up all kinds of audio setup. Uh, there's so much stuff you can do in here. I don't even want to get involved in it right now because it's, it's that much. Matter of fact, I'm going to change. Uh, that's already there. Okay, never mind. I already did that already. I want to change the time zone. Uh, exit. So basically, you can make this map however you want it. Uh, like when I do full, for example, when I do full... I go to display, I make this full, it comes up my PDF, okay? On this screen, excuse me, my nose is like running. On this screen, on the passenger side, co-pilot side, when I do full screen, the uh, maps come up. Because I have this on this side and my maps on full screen on this side. But I don't have it full screen on this side, you guys know, is uh, it's half PDF and half the maps. But, and that's when I put the, I put the Radio Master on, okay, the um, Avidime IFD 540 comes on, radios comes on, the audio panel comes on, and of course this side comes on. And the reason why this is on and that's off, and these are all off, because when you start the airplane, you don't want all this on. 
So Dynon's okay, you put the master on, you have this on, and why do you say you start it with, why is it safe with this on? Because it's it's wired differently, however they said, it to, I forget what the, the exact term is, but you need the engine monitoring down here, okay, to start your airplane. So that's why this side is okay to start up the airplane. Obviously the radios, you don't want a surge of electric going to hitting the radios and so on and so forth, that's why those are all off. And when the plane starts, I hit the uh, master, uh, radio master and that'll all work. So we're all updated. That's how quick that was uh, And then we'll pull out the drive and I'm gonna do is The charts so the IF um, IFR high and low and the VFR charts charts, excuse me and airport diagrams are all in here throughout the United States So I'm gonna just plug the, it in to that one and the one on this side and then I keep them plugged in the whole time so when I when I have to do a update, all I do is I pull these out, I bring them home, like I showed you earlier. I use the program; it's 100 bucks a year for the program, and I update them, bring them back to the airport, and I'm done. Uh, other manufacturers you can get like the um, Wi-Fi cards and so on and so forth, but uh, yeah, they're like 800, 900 bucks a year uh, to have that prescription. And but uh, this is 100 bucks a year, which is a lot cheaper. I know basically you just gotta upload it and download it yourself and put it in the system. It's very easy to do as I just did. And once you do it once or twice, it's one, two, three, you're done. So uh, that's basically it. So I'm going to plug these in. Keep them plugged in. I'll give you all the charts. For example, there's nothing plugged in right now. So if I went to to the menu and I went to map layer, only thing you're gonna see is TOPOG and terrain alert. I don't know why that's off, but we'll put, turn that on. So that's all the maps that I have in the system right now. Um, and the reason why you, we need to have these is because um, the sky doesn't have that much memory uh, to have all this stuff put in the system as well. So Dyna makes it very easy to just have a USB plug, okay, and use a thumb drive, and it's simply to just, I hide, some people put it on their panel, I see, I noticed that. I don't like that because it's sticking out. I don't, I just don't like it sticking out. So I decided to uh, hide it underneath the panel, and you plug it in, and basically you're updating these once a month um, if you're not doing any, any IFR stuff, um, same thing with the Avidyne IFD, you don't really need to update it every single month. Um, I update the charts, I like to have them fresh and updated. Uh, but basically that's what you have without the, without the uh, thumb drive in for the charting. So if I go to display here, I go to map, that's, that's your, uh, that, what you can do is with this map, you can make it bigger uh, and blow it up a little bit. And this is the Dynon's map, which is great. This is a great, great map. It gives you all the air spaces. You can click on some stuff. It tells you what it is. Newburgh Class D, 3,000 feet MSL surface. So from the surface, if you scroll over here, and I'll zoom out for you. So uh, this is Stewart right here. That's highlighted. Okay. So that's highlighted. So it'll tell you right here what it is. Okay. And it's it's surface to 3,000 feet. You know, is there airspace? Uh, so 3,100, you're good to go over. Uh, so it gives you a lot of information also their terrain is all in here here's the mountains right by me it's very difficult to see with the camera it doesn't really do it justice at all but the graphics are really good it gives you all the information throughout the country and I can zoom all the way out and we're right we're right here we're right here here's the country uh, if you go over to uh, the western side of the country and zoom in here you can see all the the graphics come alive here and all the and all the uh, air spaces that you need so it's a great system, but I like, again, I like to have the IFR charts and the VFR charts and airport diagrams on the IFD, uh, the Skyview HDX as well. So the information still all, still all will be there. Okay, which is nice. So that's all still in there without having uh, the thumb drive. So you get a lot. Let's go back. Let's go back where we are. Let's get out of here. Okay, we're back. We're back over to the east side of the country. But well, it's touchscreen, um, and I have the information on the right-hand side. And uh, if you don't have engine monitoring, um, it's a little bit bigger screen, obviously. It's a 10-inch, but I don't have 
a separate box for engine monitoring, which I'm okay with. I don't want more boxes on the dash here. Uh, but you can you can take this away to make it bigger. And there's a button up here, like I just did before. You can hit that button, and it takes that engine monitor in the bottom away. Okay, which is basically your um, exhaust temperatures, uh, your fuel flow, and stuff like that. And your main stuff is still available uh, that you really need. You know, your fuel, um, your uh, fuel pressure, oil pressure, oil temperature, RPMs, and um, your inches. So you still get that. Bring it bigger. And there you go. So now I'm going to plug in one of these and just show you. So bear with me for a second. I'm going to take the other one is out. So I plugged, I plugged that in the bottom. But that's going to say warning. Oil pressure is obviously low. We're not starting. And it's going to say the other display is offline because we didn't turn it on uh, because we don't need it. Um, so now we'll go to the this we'll go to menu, okay. Map layer. Now you see the sectional. You see sectional came up, so I plugged in the thumb drive, low and high. So now if I want I want this on, okay, we'll put on we'll put on the sectional, which is the VFR maps. So you go to display, and now I might hit the map button, and boom, it might there you go. So now it's it's not dark. It's kind of like a light background because, you know, we're low. Once we get higher, that would all get nice and brighter for us. Uh, but that, that now, now we have the VFR maps up. Okay, if you zoom out, and there's the whole country of VFR maps, as if you had on the Four Flight app. And if you go to back to uh, map display, okay, go to map. Oops, I'm sorry. Go to display. I'm sorry. Go to menu. <laughs> Still learning, right? And then go to map layer. And then of course you have your low for IFR and high. So low, we'll get out of it. And there is your IFR charts. Nice, nice to have. It's a really, really nice system. I like it a lot. Um, it's very inexpensive compared to other manufacturers. I know it's still expensive to install, but compared to other manufacturers, the Dynon has a good bang for your buck. It really, really does. And so what? if I have to pull a couple of USB thumb drives out of the plane and, and, and upload it, or update it, I should say, at my house. I'm already leaving the airplane, I'm already leaving to go to my house. What's the difference? I save myself, you know, 800 bucks a year. That's more fuel, right? <laughs> so, but that's basically how you upload to the thumb drives and then download it onto the thumb drives and upload it into the Skyview HDX from Dynon. Great system. I will have a video of going over how to set things up differently. I'm um, running out of time today. Okay guys, so hopefully this helped you out. Please subscribe to the channel if you like what I'm doing. And like always folks, fly safe, be safe, and I'll see you guys next time.